Today, character design is the issue at hand, where we discuss some of the changes, upgrades, and leveling up of alterations that I did for my main character, Sano, for my series, Apple Black. Adding more style, if you will. The character design, to me, was a little too simplistic, especially very early, early on, where I was doing some character design stuff, like, from the jump. The color scheme was also very simple, and in some ways, that was kind of a good thing. Story-wise, he was this new character, and the simplicity of his design kind of hinted at how blank a canvas he was. But the same way I want to have progression as an artist, with the story, with the art, you can kind of show progression with the design as well. Sometimes for practical reasons, and sometimes it's a little symbolic. Almost like when you have your characters upgrading in an RPG, it's not always a character design change. It can also be seen as evolution. Based on the story, the character arc, practical reasons, the list goes on. When I was starting out with my series, my art style was very much similar to influences of mine, like a bleach. There was a period there where I was trying to develop something new while still trying to sort out the story, character designs, and all that good stuff. Luckily, as time was gone, my art style has developed to become more original. Bottom line, I was figuring out a lot of stuff at this time. Trying to find my voice and trying to find ways for Santa to pop and be unique by himself. And like I said, as time has gone on, I think I've found some success in that. Still not perfect, so I imagine more evolution is on the way. At first, the design, like I said, had a very simplistic approach to it. Now, sometimes a more simplistic approach, a more simplistic design compared to, say, video game designs that are a little more complicated, lends itself well to comics because these are characters you're going to be drawing over and over and over. You don't want it to be too tedious. An example of this would be the notorious design of Naruto's goggles, how the creator don't want to keep drawing the goggles over and over and then gave birth to the headbands, which are iconic to the series today. One of the things that stood out about Sano's design was the hydrangea blue. This kind of stood the test of time since the beginnings of all the iterations of this design. Sometimes it's very important for your character design to have something that really stands out, very memorable about their design that in best cases you can't find anywhere else. There's also a practicality to the design because the garment is designed to reduce the impulse energies that the Arotus arm releases. The Arotus arm is said to be this powerful arm, arm of a god type thing. So it has a purpose. It's not just there to be different. I always thought it was cool to have this character with this super black arm that isn't a glove, that is kind of blend of science and sorcery. So it's it's weird and not fully explained as a mind of its own. Think having Dr. Manhattan for an arm. Apple Black, my series is not getting released properly. Bookstores translated, the list goes on, the whole nine yards, along with other series within our roster. Hammer, Oblivion Rouge, Saigami, the list goes on. Links to where you can pre-order all of those are in my description as well. The garment has always been a strong, memorable aspect of Sano's design. And there were moments where I experimented with doing something different, but I always found myself coming back to the garment. It was so memorable that it even made my spider soda design for Sano more distinctive, memorable, fun. ETC. Sometimes I tried nothing, but story-wise it made more sense for the arm to not be out in the open too easily. All that said, I wasn't too fond of how simplistic maybe a lot of the white space was of the design. I always wanted something that felt more than just a white tee, even though I experimented with that approach as well. And then this is what we have. Now I'm drawing Santa with the current design, where I've played with certain symbols on the top, experimenting with different materials and different parts of it. Maybe some parts of the clothing is shiny and thicker than others, different patterns and designs on the shirt. Playing around with my made up language, as you would imagine, there are a lot of influences and inspirations to my work and to this character and where this character is from. There's definitely some Japanese influence, but there's also some Middle Eastern influence, some Arabic going on. And so the made up language is kind of a mixture of both Japanese script and Arabic. And what I'm writing there in the back loosely translates to freedom writer or something like that. In the series, English is going to be the universal language, but certain tribes will have their own special sacred tongue. I decided to call the language Jara. And if you're paying attention, you can imagine why. In my world, it's not like there's any America or Africa or this or that or USA and all that. But if there was a live action adaptation of my series, I would say Santa Falls along the lines of uh, like an Aladdin. Which is funny because Aladdin also has a similar color scheme, a similar dynamic with his dad, monkey type sidekick figure. I didn't plan any of those. I just thought it was funny we ended up there. It's going to have a strap with a container for his new wand that we will kind of discuss and explore as time goes on. And I talked about it in previous videos as well. The wand is essentially this brush. It will also have its form of evolution. In my world, wands are essentially items that have gone through certain types of rituals to assist your sorcerer cast spells. Sometimes they amplify the spells. Sometimes they make the spell easier to cast. If Cyclops was a sorcerer in my world, you could say the eye thingy would be his wand. Your characters in my world with wands that are cigarettes, boxing gloves, nunchucks, brass knuckles, blades, staffs, lenses, belts, rings, fabric, a pair of dice, guitars, and you can kind of already imagine 
what the abilities would be and how it would play off those wands. And Sano being able to teleport, his wand will shoot out sorcery filled ink that would teleport away whatever it touches. Now, where is it teleporting it to and stuff like that? I'll leave those to the books. I got some fun ideas there. The wand itself is going to have different forms as time goes on. Maybe it could become bigger and shaped more like a broomstick that you would find in the Harry Potter, which is also another influence of mine. A nod to those types of series and no witches and wizards and stuff like that, even though in this world we're playing with sorcerers, but pretty much the same thing. This is just my interpretation of it. The same way with wands. Wands have generally been, you know, sticks. You do all the Harry Potter stuff, but in this world, again, it's my interpretation where a wand could be anything, almost. If you were in the Apple Black world, what would your wand be? Anytime I talk about wands, I always like to ask the audience and to leave in the comments what your wand would be if you're in my world and what would you do? I've gotten some really fun ones. It's always fun to hear. A strap and the container would be to hold the wand, at least when it's in resting mode. And as time has gone on, I've also tried to get influence outside of anime and manga to TV shows and movies, like Westworld, season one, Sixth Sense, Fight Club, I'm a big plot twist guy, so you can expect stuff like that to happen in my series. And I think diversifying your influence map can help set you apart. Drawing influence from where you're from, outside of just, you know, Japan, because it's manga, can help diversify what you're doing, can help you stand out and be more original. And it's also more accurate because you'll be writing what you know. So with Sano, especially because of how I started, while there's still a little Japanese influence, I've made sure to draw more influence from other places as the new language would suggest. And it's all kind of made up. The, the fun thing about creating stories like this is you're kind of the god of your own world. I also draw influences from where I'm from, which is Nigerian, and that's evident in some of the places, some of the characters, their names, the names of their wands, and so on. In the last video where I talked about wands with my other character, Obi, and his wand, Shango Chuku, I always like to have the wands be like a simple item, at least in its initial form, and then it could evolve to be something else, where with Obi's wand, it can kind of turn into some kind of spinning blade slash yo-yo, but initially it's a yo-yo. At, at its core, it's a yo-yo. I always like to start there. I think it's an interesting topic and I will definitely have another video that kind of does a stronger deep dive into all of that. I've always liked the color scheme of the white, black, and the hydrangea blue. But I've always felt like if it was just three colors without some other colors here and there, it just feels a little too flat and, and too clean. These colors and the choices, we tie back to certain color charts and what those colors represent. Black, death, red, danger, white, maybe something regal. And sometimes they could represent more than one thing. And so in some cases, the more present a certain color is, that could hint to how close that character is to what that color represents. The added yellows, browns, and reds, not just a bit closer to what kind of character Santa is. Beyond just the whites, the blacks, and the hydrangea blues. Also being the main character in the Shonen series, the one colors that pop and grab readers' attention. Primary colors are great, red especially, because red has kind of programmed us to stop when we look at it. The hint of red is coming in the evolution of the design is gonna help a great deal. Red also, in my head, foreshadows a certain aspect of the character that we will explore in time. Ultimately, with character design, you want to do a lot of research, and to a degree, I'm still doing that, and I'm sure we will keep evolving over time. The more you place yourself in a position where you can justify the decisions that you're making, the better. I'll be doing a hashtag draw this in your style for Sano on my Instagram, so go on there for more details. For two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I thank you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video. Holy Ghost, smash the subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. Follow me on all social media. Follow me on Twitch. I'm going to be doing more streams, working on future pages and volume four and more. Please pre-order the books. Link to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. Check out more videos. This is White Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.